Welcome to this deep dive. We're really focusing today, uh, trying to understand the potential of two, well, pretty fascinating compounds. They're making waves in health, natokinase and N-acetylcysteine. You probably know it as NSC. Mm. Our mission really is to pull out the key insights from some recent expert discussions. We've got input from a clinical pharmacologist mm. and uh, an integrative medicine researcher. Right. We want to get why they're getting so much attention, you know, in preventative health, yeah. especially for things like, say, cardiovascular health, maybe cellular energy. Exactly. And there's quite a bit to unpack. The core idea is how these compounds might um, influence things, everything from keeping your blood flowing nicely to supporting, you know, the basic health of your cells. OK, let's maybe start with natokinase. It's got that strong link to heart health. Sounds good. So the key insight here, I think, is that natokinase essentially acts like a natural clot buster. It's an enzyme, comes from natto, that's fermented soybeans. Right. I heard of natto. Big in Japan. Huge. Consumed for over a thousand years. It's a, it's superpower, if you like, is degrading fibrin. Fibrin. That's the stuff that makes a blood clux. That's the main protein scaffold. Yeah. Mm. You could sort of think of it like a biological drain cleaner for your blood vessels. Okay. So this enzyme from food people have eaten for ages... Mm is now being seriously looked at for our heart and vessels. What's the evidence like? Well, there's quite a bit. You've got lab studies, preclinical work, and also human clinical trials. Mm -hmm. And they suggest natokinase can help with healthy blood pressure levels and also help manage certain um, blood factors involved in clotting, specifically fibrinogen and factor seven. Factor seven, remind me. Ah, yeah. Think of it as one of the key ingredients your body uses to start building a clot. Natokinase seems to help keep levels of some of these building blocks, well, in check. Got it. So it's not just thinning the blood generally. It's more about supporting the body's own balance, its own ways of managing flow. Precisely. Yeah, it seems to boost your body's natural anticoagulation. It might do this by enhancing something called tissue plasminogen activator. 2PA. 2PA. That's the body's own clot dissolver. That's the one, its own natural agent. And natokinase might also work directly, actually breaking down small thrombi, small clots that might be forming. So, okay, if someone's thinking proactively about their heart health, mm -hmm. could natokinase be like a useful tool in their kit? Well, in integrative cardiology, it's definitely being looked at <laughs> as a complementary approach, you know. Complementary to what? To conventional <laughs> strategies. It's especially interesting for people who perhaps don't tolerate standard meds like statins well. Ah, uh, okay. Or maybe they're just actively looking for non-prescription options to support healthy clotting function. Right. Now, anything that fiddles with blood clotting, safety has to be a big one. What do we need to know there? Absolutely crucial point. On its own, natokinase seems pretty safe, generally speaking, a good right. profile. But the really important thing is it can add to the effect if you're already taking prescription blood thinners, okay. things like anticoagulants or antiplatelet drugs. So a higher risk of bleeding. Potentially, yes, mm. an increased risk. So figuring out the right dose for any individual is really key. And it absolutely, absolutely needs guidance from a healthcare professional. Yeah. You can't guess this stuff. Okay, that's super important. So natokinase cardiovascular focus. Let's switch gears then. Let's talk NAC. This one seems yeah. broader, more applications. It does, yeah. NAC and acetylcysteine, it's a really interesting one. Chemically, it's what's called a thiol-containing compound. Be old. Yeah, it just means it has a particular chemical group, a sulfur-hydrogen group, that lets it do important things. Specifically, it's key for making glutathione. Basically, it's a modified version of the amino acid L-cysteine. And its main job. Its primary role, and it's a huge one, is helping your body replenish glutathione levels. If there's one core takeaway for NAC, it's this. It boosts your body's master antioxidant, glutathione. And that single action has knock-on effects everywhere. Cellular energy production, immune function, detoxification, you name it. Glutathione. Yeah. That's the big protector for our cells against damage, yeah. Exactly that. Often called the master antioxidant. It's absolutely vital for healthy mitochondria. The powerhouses. The powerhouses, right. Also crucial for your liver's detox pathways and for a strong immune response. NAC is so critical because it gives you cysteine. Okay. And cysteine is often the bottleneck, the rate-limiting ingredient your body needs to make more glutathione, especially when you're under oxidative stress. Which is when you've gotten about Too many damaging free radicals, not enough protective antioxidants. Low glutathione means your cells are just more vulnerable to damage from, well, just daily living, metabolic processes, environmental stuff. Wow. One compound 
such a fundamental role. Now, you mentioned, or rather the sources mentioned, applications in mental health. That sounds intriguing. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Yeah, the psychiatric research is pretty compelling, actually. Clinical trials have shown some really encouraging results for NSE in supporting people with conditions like um, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, depression. Really? Yeah, and even addiction, things like nicotine dependence, cocaine dependence. Is that still the antioxidant effect? It seems to go beyond that. In the brain, NAC appears to influence how brain cells talk to each other. Specifically, it modulates glutamatergic neurotransmission. Okay, glutamate. That's an important brain count. Yeah. A major excitatory one. NSC helps kind of fine-tune those signals, helps restore a better balance between excitatory and inhibitory signals, which can often be out of whack in certain mental health conditions. Uh -huh. It does this partly, at least, by interacting with something called the cysteine glutamate antiporter. It's a system involved in that balancing act. Fascinating. Very different mechanism. <laughs> Now, a potential snag. You mentioned stability issues with NAC. Mm -hmm. What's the uh, the practical issue for people buying it? This is a really, really critical point. NAC, the molecule itself, is chemically quite unstable. It doesn't like moisture or oxygen much. Okay. It's what we call hygroscopic. It just sucks moisture right out of the air. And when that happens, it oxidizes. It breaks down. Making it less effective. Less effective, exactly. And it can also form these byproducts, things like dianic, that's like two NAC molecules stuck together and other impurities. That can compromise not just potency, but potentially safety and how well it's absorbed, too. So that bottle of NAC capsule someone buys, it might degrade over time, yeah. especially once opened. That's the concern, yes. The potency on the label might not be what you're actually getting, especially the longer it sits around or the more humid the environment. Right. So are there better options, more stable versions, yeah. or specific brands doing it right? Thankfully, yes, there's progress here. Research has led to more chemically stable forms. Right. One is NAC ethyl ester or NACA. Yeah. yeah. It tends to be absorbed better because it's more lipophilic, meaning it dissolves better in fats, so it can cross cell membranes more easily, generally better bioavailability. Okay. And interestingly, NCO seems better at crossing the blood-brain barrier, too, which could be a real plus for any neurological uses. Makes sense. Any others? Another one getting attention is GLEANSC. That's a combination of NSC and another amino acid, glycine. Glycine, okay. And that combo seems to work synergistically. Studies suggest it's particularly good at enhancing mitochondrial function, especially in older adults. Interesting. And what about just standard NAC? Is anyone packaging it better? Yes, definitely. Some companies are very aware of the stability problem. Zambon Pharma, for example, they make Flumusil. Yeah. Their tablets come in these special air-minimizing tubes. Uh -huh. And another company, BioAdvantix, they make Pharmanac. That's an effervescent tablet. And they package each one individually in sealed foil packets. So that protects it right up until you use it. Exactly. And it's worth noting, both those companies have actually supplied NAC for clinical trials. So, you know, the researchers needed stable, reliable product. It highlights how important proper formulation and packaging are. It really sounds like both natokinase and NAC are doing quite a lot in the body, not just one single thing. You call them multi-system modulators. What does that mean for us, for our health? Right. That term, multi-system modulator, it reflects this idea in... um network pharmacology. It's a shift in thinking. Okay. Instead of a drug hitting just one target, one pathway, these compounds seem to influence multiple interconnected systems all at once. Like natokinase on blood flow. And NAC on antioxidants and brain chemistry. Right. Yeah. So they can affect things like oxidative stress levels, inflammation, blood flow dynamics, even neurotransmitter balance, as we discussed. It fits really well with a system's biology view of health. Which is better for complex diseases. Exactly. Think about chronic conditions like atherosclerosis or metabolic syndrome or neurodegenerative diseases. They usually involve multiple factors all interacting. So compounds that can gently nudge several of these factors in the right direction, that's potentially very valuable. But, and it's a big but perhaps, they're so easy to buy. Over-the-counter supplements. Are there risks with that? Interactions we really need to flag. Absolutely. That widespread availability, despite them having quite potent biological effects, it is a major consideration. It's something to be cautious about. Like what specifically? 
Well, as we mentioned, NAC can interact with certain drugs. Nitroglycerin is one, some chemotherapy drugs too. Okay. And natokinase, with its blood thinning effects, that potential interaction with prescription anticoagulants or antiplatelets is really key. The bleeding risk again. The bleeding risk, yes. So the danger is people self-treating, you know, without fully understanding their own health situation or what other medications they're on and how these things might interact. That's definitely a concern. So wrapping this up a bit, what's the main takeaway? The key advice for, say, healthcare professionals listening and also just for individuals interested in this. Okay, well, for clinicians, I'd say it's really important to stay informed. Keep up with the research on these compounds because they are becoming more relevant. Patients are asking about them. Right. So having a solid grasp of the potential benefits, but also the risks and interactions is crucial for giving good advice. And for the rest of us. For individuals, the message has to be, Talk to your healthcare provider, your doctor, your pharmacist, someone qualified before you start taking these or any supplement, really. Because natural doesn't mean safe. Precisely. Natural does not mean risk free, not automatically. When they're used in the right way under professional guidance, compounds like these might offer real benefits. But if used inappropriately, well, you could run into problems. So the bottom line is these aren't just, you know, trendy wellness fads. They're biochemically powerful substances. They need serious thought and professional input. That sums it up perfectly. Yep. <laughs> yes. Okay, so to sort of bring this deep dive to a conclusion then, mm -hmm. it seems really clear that both natokinase and NAC have, well, significant potential mm -hmm. for supporting cardiovascular health, overall well-being, mm -hmm. through different but maybe complementary ways. Mm -hmm. But the absolutely critical message here is mm -hmm. using them really needs careful thought and it needs informed professional guidance. Right. And what's quite exciting, actually, is thinking about the ongoing research, the development of, say, those more stable or more bioavailable forms of things like NAC. Yeah. How might those advances change how we approach proactive health management, you know, in the coming years? It does make you think. It does. And it also makes you wonder what other compounds from nature might be out there, holding similar, maybe undiscovered potential to support our health. Definitely some food for thought there. And as always, we just want to remind everyone listening, this deep dive has been for informational purposes, drawing on the sources we looked at. Please always, always consult your own physician or pharmacist for personalized medical advice.